I'm Dr. Jess Mason, and this is Dr. Walid Hamoud, and we are going to show you how to check compartment pressures. Does that sound good? Sounds great. Let's do this. Why don't you get that all sterile and anesthetized? Now, we're going to do this in three parts. First, we are going to show you how to set up and calibrate and use the Stryker intracompartmental pressure monitor system. Then we're going to do a little bit of a review of the anatomic compartments and where to insert the needle for each compartment. And finally, we're just going to top it off with a little bit of rainbow sprinkles and do some pathophysiology right there at the end. All right, so uh, there's one thing you need to remember before you start, and that's the number 30. The number's 30. What's the number? 30. That's right. And that's because if the pressure in any compartment is above 30, that's bad. Also, if the delta pressure, which is the difference between the diastolic blood pressure and the compartment pressure, if the difference between those is less than 30, also bad. Now, let's get started. To set it up, you have your sterile components, a 3cc sterile saline syringe. You have the chamber, and you're going to connect them thusly. Now you're going to connect the needle to the other side. And the needle has a side port for measuring the pressures. And we're going to clear out the air in the chamber by injecting the saline into the chamber. No air bubbles are allowed. And you do this holding it at 45 degrees. And you may have to give it a little bit of a, an aggressive flick, like a subungual hematoma kind of flick. There. Easy peasy, looks good. Now we're gonna load this into our pressure monitor. So we'll open this chamber up and it should snap right in place. The drawer should close nice and easily. If it doesn't, then you need to readjust the angle of the phalange of your syringe. Let's turn it on and to zero it, you're gonna hold it at the angle that you're gonna use to insert it into the patient. And you're gonna hit the button conveniently labeled zero and you should get zero on the screen. Now we're ready to check our compartment pressure. So put on a fresh sterile glove, repalpate your landmarks, and go ahead and insert it into the compartment. You might feel a pop as you go through the fascia. Inject about 0.3 ml of saline, and now it should read your compartment pressure. You know you're in the right place because if you squeeze that compartment, you'll get a rise in the pressure. The pressure is over 30, so this is consistent with compartment syndrome, and I think he's going to need a fasciotomy. I'm sorry, sir. Well, how about now we review the anatomic compartments? The lower leg has four compartments that Dr. Hamoud has volunteered to help us demonstrate. For all of the compartments, you're going to go at the imaginary cross-sectional line about one-third the way down the tibia. For the anterior compartment, palpate the tibia and go one centimeter laterally. Insert the needle one to three centimeters deep and the pressure should rise with plantar flexion of the foot. For the lateral compartment, palpate the posterior border of the fibula and insert the needle just anterior to this, aiming right towards the fibula. Go about one centimeter deep and the pressure should rise with inversion of the foot. Aim for the deep posterior compartment by grabbing the medial border of the tibia on one side and the lateral border of the fibula on the other side. Insert the needle medially, aiming towards the posterior fibula and go about two to four centimeters in. The pressure should rise with extension of the toes. And finally, the superficial posterior compartment. Go three to five centimeters off midline and insert the needle two to four centimeters deep. The pressure will rise with dorsiflexion of the foot. The forearm has two main compartments. Okay, arguably, maybe more, but two that we're gonna focus on, the common ones. And again, for both of these, you're going about one third the way down the forearm. For the volar compartment, position the patient like they're doing an arm curl, then have them oppose their thumb and small finger and flex against resistance. Track that palmaris longus tendon up and insert the needle just medial to this point aiming towards the ulna. Go one to two centimeters deep and the pressure rises with extension of the wrist. To find the dorsal compartment, have the patient palm down and palpate the ulna. Go one centimeter towards the radius and insert the needle one to two centimeters deep. The pressure rises with flexion at the wrist. 
Did you get all that? I know it was a lot and we went kind of fast. So we're gonna do a little bit of a review of the clinical findings that you gotta know for compartment syndrome. And remember, there are five Ps. The first one is pain out of proportion. Then we've got paresthesia. We've got pallor, paresis, and pulse deficit. But the most important one, and the one you're gonna remember, is pain out of proportion because that's the one you're usually going to see first before the other ones happen. The other thing that you got to remember is the number 30. That's 30 millimeters of mercury. A compartment pressure above 30 is very concerning. Or if that delta pressure narrows down so it's less than 30, then that's also really bad. Okay, we got this, right? We got it. Now you know what to do when you're under pressure.